If you haven't done so, please pause the video, reread the problem before listening on. The question states that initially the switch S has been open for a long period of time. So we want to take a more careful look at the circuit under those conditions. So let's just come down here and kind of zoom in on the circuit. And if the switch S has been open for a very long period of time, then current can not flow through this section of the circuit when that switch is open. So what we can essentially do is eliminate that section. And then what we're left with is a pretty simple circuit. It's a basic RC circuit with one resistor, one capacitor. And if we let current flow through this circuit for a long period of time, the current sort of comes out of the positive terminal of the battery, works its way around, starts depositing positive charges on this plate of the capacitor. The other plate becomes negatively charged. But eventually, after a long period of time, the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor is going to equal the potential difference across the terminals of the battery. So in other words, we could say that the potential across the capacitor is going to equal the potential across the plates of the battery. This is the symbolic representation of that statement. Now we know the value of the potential difference supplied by battery two, it was three volts. So we can now say that the potential across the capacitor plates is also going to equal three volts after a long period of time. Now that's useful because that's going to allow us to calculate the charge, acro uh, not across the plates, but the charge on each plate of the capacitor. We're gonna call this the initial charge, we'll call it Q naught, and that will equal the capacitance value multiplied by the potential across the plates of the capacitor. Now, the, capa the capacitance value of C was given as 10 microfarads, so let's fill that in. And notice, because it was in microfarads, we multiplied by 10 to the minus 6 to convert it into the standard unit of farads. And then again, the potential difference across the plates is 3 volts. We multiply this out, and we can see that the initial charge on the plates of the capacitor is 3 times 10 to the minus 5, and this will be in coulombs. Now this is a value that we want to keep in mind because that's the initial charge on the capacitor plates. But we go back to the question, and it says then, after we had that switch open for a long time, the switch is then closed for a long time. What is the change in the charge? So after we close that switch, then the charge on the capacitor plates is actually going to change. And that's what we need to figure out is what is the new charge on the capacitor plates after the switch has been closed for a long period of time. So let's go back and look at that scenario. Now, when we close that switch, current begins flowing through the circuit. We have two batteries. We notice that the potential supplied by battery two is three volts, and the potential from battery one is only one volt. So in essence, battery two has a stronger sort of force pushing charges through the circuit. So we're going to allow the current to kind of come off the positive terminal of battery two. And as it does so, it's going to reach this junction, and some of that charge is going to make its way over here, and that's going to start charging up the plates of the capacitor, so these become positively charged. And then the rest of the current goes through this section of the circuit, kind of comes around, it's going to rejoin the current that was flowing through the middle section, combines back up and returns to battery E2. So that's kind of the flow of the current. And we can label these plates negative. And if we let the switch be closed for a long period of time, what's going to happen is yes, current will flow, but eventually the capacitor plates are going to become charged up. That current can no longer flow through the middle section. So we're going to remove the current after a long period of time, and this is called steady state. This just means that the plates have charged to the extent that current can no longer push its way through the plates. Remember, the current is assumed to be positive, so as it comes back up, it's encountering a plate that's ever more positive, so there's going to be a repulsion eventually that won't allow any more current to go in that direction. So no current will flow through that midsection after a long period of time, but the current will continue to flow in this sort of clockwise direction around this loop of the circuit. We need to calculate that current. We want to know how much current is flowing after the switch has been closed for a long period of time. We can do that by applying Kirchhoff's loop rule. So here's how this is going to work. We're going to begin at the negative terminal 
of the battery labeled E2. We can begin anywhere, but we just choose to begin there. And we're just going to move our way clockwise around the loop until we return back to that negative terminal. Now, as we move clockwise around the loop, we're going to be keeping track of potential changes. So for example, we start at the negative terminal and we move to the positive terminal. That's going to be an increase in potential. So we're going to call that increase in potential positive E2. And then we move through resistor R2. Now, when you move through a resistor, you're going to have a potential drop, and we will have a minus sign as a result. Ohm's law tells us that the potential drop across a capacitor is equal to the current times the resistance value. So we will multiply the current times the resistance value R2. We continue clockwise around the loop, and we encounter R1. Same idea. We will have a potential drop equal to the current multiplied by the resistance R1. Then we get to this battery. Now be careful here because you're going from a positive plate to a negative plate. So here you're going to have a potential drop. You're going from positive to negative. That will also have a minus sign, and that will be the potential of battery 1. We continue clockwise. We return back to the negative terminal. Kirchhoff tells us that once you do that, you can set that total potential changes equal to zero. Now we can solve this for the current by adding these two terms here to both sides of the equation. That allows us to cancel them out on the left hand side. We'll then factor out the current on the right hand side and then divide both sides by that term in parentheses. And this is great. We can solve for the current because we know all of these values, R1 and R2 were given and so were the E1 and E2 of the batteries. And when we solve that, we can see that the current is 3.33 approximately amps. Now this is going to help us solve for the charge stored on the capacitor at this sort of steady state. So let's go back to this circuit. We now know the current flowing through is equal to that 3.33 amps. Now what we're going to do is apply a loop rule again, because what we're going to need to do is apply the loop rule to figure out the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. So let's begin to set up that loop rule next. And for this loop rule, we can choose a couple of different loops. We can go sort of clockwise around this loop if we want. We can go clockwise around this loop. It actually wouldn't matter. So we will choose to start at the negative terminal and we're gonna work our way clockwise. So we're gonna go around this loop. We're gonna make a turn here so that way we can go through the capacitor and then we will return back to that negative terminal. So while we do this, we will keep track of the potential changes. So here we go, starting at the negative terminal, we're going clockwise. We encounter really no circuit elements until we get to the capacitor. Now we're going from a negative plate to a positive plate, so that's gonna be an increase in potential. We're gonna call that the potential across the capacitor. So then we keep moving in a clockwise direction, and then we encounter R1. So as we go through R1, we're gonna have that potential drop we're going to say minus the current times R1, according to Ohm's law. And then we get to the battery 1. We're going from the positive plate down to the negative plate. That's going to be a potential drop as well. So we'll say minus E1. We return to the negative terminal, and we can set that equal to 0. Great. Now we can solve for the potential across the capacitor. We'll just add those sort of negative terms to the other side. And we have all the values here. We, we have the current calculated earlier. We have R1 and then E1. Let's plug them in. And now we can see the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor is about 1.67 volts. Now, that's pretty fantastic because remember that the charge across, I keep saying across, but the charge on the plates of the capacitor is equal to the capacitance times the potential difference across the plates of the capacitor. So we just take the capa the capa oh my goodness, capacitance value, which was 10 microfarads, so 10 times 10 to the minus sixth farads, and multiply it by the potential difference that we just calculated. The charge here now on the capacitor is 1.67 times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs. So the question wanted the change in charge. It says, yeah, what is the change in the charge on the capacitor? So we can consider this charge that we just calculated kind of like a final value. We have the initial value somewhere. Yeah, right there. So we're just going to take this final value down here and subtract that initial value to get the change. And when we compute that, we can see the change in charge is negative 1.33. That's a great three, isn't it? 
times 10 to the minus 5 coulombs. So the charge has diminished once we closed the switch and allowed the plates to kind of recharge themselves in a different configuration. And if your homework system requires you to have micro coulombs, well, we can say that one micro coulomb is 10 to the negative sixth coulombs. So if you compute that conversion, then you would get negative 13.3 micro coulombs. So there is a net loss of charge once that switch was closed for a long period of time.